today we're showcasing the beautiful city of London and its sustainable future. The ever-growing city was founded and led by the Romans in 43 AD up until the 5th century, according to History of London 2021. Hence, why you see a lot of Roman influence on the architecture in London. More notably, during the 14th century, London's port was a money machine, as it became the center for distribution of goods for Europeans, stated by the History of London 2021. Its port made up the economy at the time, as it was the busiest and largest in the world, according to Herbert 2021. By the end of the 19th century, London had quickly progressed and become a finance capital and leader in international trade, emphasized by the history of London 2021. Until this day, it continues to be the UK's transportation, economic, and cultural center, according to Herbert 2021. London 2019 also states that London was the first city in the world to open up an underground railway in 1863. Additionally, World Population Review 2021 indicates that population growth in London was aided by industrialization, which allowed urbanization to increase, thus jump-starting high population growth. It further states that currently, London approximately has a population of 9,425,622, with 69.7% of its population being Caucasian. To add on, the main religion followed in London is Christianity, as a little less than half of the population adhere to it. As far as age distribution goes, Inner London tends to have a higher population of young people, because lots of young professionals tend to move there to start on their careers. Most of the people living in Inner London are 30 to 34 years old, in Outer London, 35 to 39 is the largest age group, while 50 to 54 is the largest age group everywhere else in England, according to Population by Age Groups 2021. Additionally, in terms of environment, the Sustainable Design and Construction Plan 2014 states that London's CO2 emissions are the lowest in the country, averaging at 5.9 toners per capita. This plan continues to state that the way London is set up has allowed the city to be very efficient with its land use and maintenance of large infrastructure projects such as its low carbon public transportation. Now to talk about the fun stuff. The London Sustainability Plan we're taking a look at today is one of many plans put in place by the Mayor and the London Assembly in order to achieve an overall greener and more sustainable London. This specific plan is called London Sustainable Design and Construction Plan and was created in April of 2014 by the Mayor of London and a project team appointed by him. This plan was specifically designed to be a guiding document for local urban planning authorities and neighborhoods to take the advice from this plan and work on becoming more sustainable, according to the Sustainable Design and Construction Plan 2014. Now, the reason why London created a plan like this, or any overall environmental sustainability strategy, is due to a number of reasons. For starters, London exceeds the EU's limit of safe nitrogen dioxide emissions according to the Sustainable Design and Construction Plan 2014. The plan also states that London's demand for energy is rising, hence why London plans to improve its energy efficiency. Additionally, London's Energy Strategy 2018 states that the noise pollution, toxic air, green space threats, and negative effects of climate change are all challenges faced there, and reasons why London wants to move towards a sustainable future. The main issue currently in London, though, is its air quality as thousands die every year because of it. As far as the timeline, London Mayor Sadiq Khan wants to make London a a zero-carbon city by 2050, as mentioned in London's Energy Strategy 2018. He also has other goals by 2025, such as wanting 25% of London's heat and power to come from localized energy systems and to increase tree cover by 5%, and a 5% increase in green surface area in the central activity zone by 2030 followed by another 5% increase by 2050, all according to the Sustainable Design and Construction Plan 2014. This plan also supports the, that the mission and revision for London at the Mayor is to not only mitigate and adapt to climate change, but also support the green economy and mostly be a world leader in sustainable development. In order for all of this to be possible, the Mayor will be working with NGOs, the national government, neighboring European countries, and individual London citizens. Looking towards the future, one of the most important issues to tackle is the imminent and long-lasting effects of climate change. This is reflected greatly in London's Sustainable Design and Construction Plan from the Annual Monitoring Report from 2014. 
prominent way London addresses this complex issue is via carbon dioxide offsetting through policies as well as renewable energy development and increase of green cover. What exactly does this look like? Well, the city is creating a set price for carbon dioxide emissions for developers over a certain level, differentiating between residential and non-residential developments. The current national price of carbon stated by the Zero Carbon Hub is £60 per tonne. This would be calculated over a 30-year period of time for development to calculate offset prices that would be paid. Monitoring and creating energy use reports is important for quantifying and evaluating sustainable development and long-term carbon use. Along with a multitude of suggestions for decreasing energy use in development including optimizing natural daylight, limiting overshadowing, increasing and use of light-colored materials. They are also encouraging renewable energy use as a means of carbon offset. They are seeking a more bottom-up approach by having the boroughs and neighborhoods identify locations and available opportunities where renewable energy technologies could exist and be beneficial. The sustainability report has set an ambitious goal to be carbon neutral by 2031 with a 40% reduction of emission by 2013. This, along with the measures being taken, shows a commitment and dedication to environmental sustainability and working towards minimizing the impact of climate change, not only for the UK, but for the whole planet. Another action the city is taking to increase green space and the number of trees. The existing green infrastructure will remain, and there is a goal to increase it by 5% by 2030. There is a focus on central London, which is a densely urban area with little green cover. This action is both a mitigating and adapting strategy against climate change, as it is indicated in Dr. Bernstein's lecture on climate change in cities. There is an increase in carbon sequestering from the plants that mitigates climate change, but store protection and better drainage are adaption measures. There are measures laid out in this report for each type of pollution as well. We will be talking specifically about water pollution and how it is being addressed. There is a proposed sustainable drainage design that is available for developers to reduce water pollution running into ground and surface water sources. This is accompanied by quality checks that will assess the health of water system in close proximity to developments. In addition, multiple suggestions are made to reduce water pollution at sites, including oil separators, avoiding misconnection pipes, and bonding of chemicals to a specific storage area. These four examples of environmentally sustainable development carbon pricing, renewable energy development, increased green cover, and managing water pollution only scratch the surface of this report. London has proposed a number of other projects and checklists for how to create and maintain a resilient city with a clear focus on environmental sustainability. With the City of London's growing population and advancements in its economy, this plan is needed to call for initiatives that will help its infrastructure to also keep up with its development. The projects that are called for by this sustainability plan encompass the three pillars of sustainability, as they are mutually dependent. This section will primarily go over developments that contribute to the social and economic pillars. The social pillar pertains to the initiatives that impact the people in the area. One of the main initiatives included in the sustainability plan is for the construction of appealing buildings and green infrastructure. A proposed way in doing this is to take into consideration a mix of land uses that will provide a range of services that are easily accessible to the general public. By doing so, it reduces the need for residents and locals to travel long distances. In addition to convenience, maximizing the mix of land uses leads to the development of community safe spaces. This initiative gives power to the people of London. Another initiative that will improve the social aspect of the communities in London is the increase of tree cover. The plan states that it is the mayor's goal to increase tree cover across London by 5% by the year 2025. To protect this initiative during the development of additional infrastructure, it has required the planting of new and similar trees if an original tree has been lost. Increasing the tree cover also increases the overall presence of green space which allows for an increase in property value, reducing current crime rates in these areas, according to page 80 of the plan. The economic pillar relates to the projects that influence businesses and the government's financial resources. A key initiative in the development of new infrastructure is to maximize the potential use of prefabrication components. This allows for components of building to be built off-site and shipped to the development site to be assembled in its entirety. 
This method of construction greatly reduces the amount of waste generated compared to building these components from scratch as it efficiently uses raw materials. Additionally, the use of prefabricated components greatly reduces the amount of time it takes to construct a development, greatly reducing expenses and oppor opportunity costs it takes for these projects to take place, according to page 61 of the plan, to efficiently use and retain energy. These designs include the use of material with a high thermal mass, green roofs and walls, and designing the internal layouts to allow for energy-efficient ventilation. These designs are considered to be passive, as it does not need to directly consume resources and energy. Rather, these components reflect or gather energy from the outside environment at no expense, according to page 37 of the plan. The Mayor of London did an exceptional job in creating the sustainability plan for the city. The plan itself covers every aspect of sustainability that the citizens of London felt they needed to address. The plan is very specific in the broader categories that it assesses as well as the more narrow solutions they have in mind in order to solve these problems. However, we feel that many of these problems are not being addressed in the correct manner that they should be. During the Fordist era, London's biodiversity was at its worst, struggling with toxic air, noise pollution, light pollution, and clean water scarcity. They have since been transitioned to a much sustainable way of life, leading them to become a greener city. But the mayor's agenda within the sustainability plan only aims to reduce the pollution they are currently causing rather than trying to reverse the damage caused in the past. For example, in the Mayor of London 2014 sustainability plan, the mayor only encourages developers to retain existing trees as part of new development proposals, and if they must remove a tree, there should be adequate replacement. We recommend that London should aim to plant more trees throughout the city and within their designated green spaces so that the pollen air can be filtered and reduced effectively, instead of keeping the number of trees throughout London at the current meager population. Claire Terrell gives a perfect model for how this problem should be addressed within her 2020 article. She says that since Singapore has reduced its mangrove population by nearly 90% due to urbanization, the city-state plans to plant 1 million trees by 2030 to recover from the loss of plant life and reverse the pollution they have caused to the air. This type of approach would be greatly beneficial in London due to the high levels of toxic air within and around the city. According to Ryan O'Hare's 2019 article, one in four of London's green spaces reaches air quality safety limits, showing that some measures to make improvements in air quality are needed. Within these polluted parks, there has also been substantial pollution of another sort, littering. We feel that the mayor should prioritize the minimization of littering within the city's green spaces in order to increase quality of life of the people and animals that live in the area. However, there is no mention of any plans to reduce littering or any programs they plan to put in place to clean the trash in these parks and green spaces. With these minor adjustments, we feel that the sustainability plan will be very effective if implemented and enforced as intended.